Hey, hey, Tony Gassens here. Another episode of Talks with Tony. Got a question today. Now, some of these questions, it kind of be pretty specific to somebody's situation, but, you know, just because we may have years and years together here on this YouTube with Talks with Tony, it's like I might as well answer even these specific questions because it still may relate to somebody's situation. So I got this question. It says, good evening. So I was wondering if you could do a video on why guys ghost women they are in a relationship with for three plus years. Now, see, that's what I mean by specific. It's like, yeah, can you do a video on a man who ghosts a woman after three plus years? Uh, sis, that ain't ghosting. That right there is not ghosting. Since y'all broke up, that ain't really ghosting right there. Three, three plus years. Ghosting is like, okay, y'all together three months and then he disappeared. This right here, y'all just, it just ran its course. After women, they are in a relationship for three plus years and start talking to another female when they haven't fully broke up with you. I've been dealing with this guy on and off for three years. He recently got mad at me and started ignoring me, but started making comments like, baby, I'm not ignoring you. I've been working long hours and been dealing with things. But I keep telling him, since you don't have time for me, come get all your clothes you left at my house. I've been telling him to get his belongings, but he doesn't want to come when I'm telling him to come. He started saying he doesn't know when his off day is that he has to talk with his supervisor. I even offered to meet him halfway or ship it to him, but he wants to come here and get them. Now he's ignoring me when I told him you have a deadline to get your things out or I'm throwing them out and then he'll respond with, I'm coming to get them. But says he's having financial problems that he'll be able to come on like another day. But I told him, if you're having financial problems, I'll meet you halfway. Remind you, he lives seven hours away because he went back home to his mother's house. I also found out he's talking to another woman, but messaging a female I know to meet up with telling her he's single now and only convert conversating with a girl but remind you we stopped talking almost two months ago but now he's dealing with someone else now I didn't read this before the video either like the last video that I put up but you know what though I'm going to keep answering these because I want y'all to really, I want this to be driven home. And I hope men see this. Send this to your brothers and your male cousins and stuff. I want men to see this, to see why I do what I do. And they, they think I'm man bashing. But this is the kind of stuff women dealing with. So now you dealing with a man who lives seven hours away because he had to go back to his mama house. He grown as all outdoors. He had to go back to his mama house. Y'all been off and on for three years. Y'all been off and on. He got mad with you. And then tried to flip it on and say, I ain't ignoring you. I just been working long hours and I'm dealing with stuff. You saying get your clothes. Listen now, do you got an address for him? See, this is the thing with y'all. This is how y'all be playing y'all self. You don't want to be done with him. You don't want to be done with them. You want to deal with them. And you want to use them clothes as a lat as an opportunity to see him one more time. Just with the hope that y'all could strike up a conversation. Conversation might go good and y'all might end up hot and heavy, making sweet love in the back seat of that car. That's a deep, deep little fantasy you done had. That this, this last meetup where he get to see you and you're going to be looking good. Because if you were done with this man, you will get an address for his mama house. And you will use the abilities that women have to outsmart a man and say, hey, I want to send your mom something for her birthday. Give me y'all address. And them clothes will be arriving. And I send a mama a little gifts just in case he told the mama, hey, such and such going to send you something. Send a mama a little gift. Send them on a little card, a little, little $25 gift card, something like that. But them clothes will be at the house. If not, I'm going to tell you what a woman who done with that man, them clothes going to the Goodwill, to the Salvation Army. And she'll give him the receipt 
uh, let me know. I'll mail this receipt to you so you can file on your taxes that uh, your donation to the. Now, yeah, that's wrong. But a woman who done, she done. She don't care nothing about that. Because if you dealt with him for three plus years, he obviously ain't that crazy. So you don't think he finna come at because you gave his clothes to the Goodwill. Another thing is he don't want them clothes because he would have been and told you to just mail them to him. He want to leave them clothes because he like, listen, him leaving them clothes at your house is like him having a key to your house. So he don't want you to move on with your life because right now he looking for a sponsor. He trying to find a woman that's going to put up with him that he could live off of, that he could take advantage of. A woman who's going to be crazy enough to invest in one of his hair brain ideas. And then if he find that, you will never hear from him because he replacing those clothes with her income. He buying him a new wardrobe. She buying him clothes. That's what he looking for. A woman he could come up on like a sponsor. When he find that sponsor, he's going to give you his butt to kiss. In that moment, you're going to start to miss him when you start to see his Facebook post with another woman. You're going to be missing him and you're going to be reaching out to him by them clothes just to strike up a conversation. And so he leaving old clothes so that he leaves some skin in the game. So he got a reason so that when you move on and you posting your vacations with your mask on and you living your life, he could write you and say, hey, what about my clothes? I want to know, can I come get my clothes? When you in that new relationship, hey, I want to know, can I come get my clothes? Bro, your clothes been gone. Your clothes at the Salvation Army. Uh, how much was them clothes worth? Okay, I'm going to send you a check for them. I'm doing so good. Oh, this unemployment and this EDL, this EIDD, uh, this disaster loan, this PPP loan. I'm doing so good. I'm balling out. So how much was that? How much? Was, oh, them jeans went on $100 jeans. Them jeans were $25. Okay. What you had a shirt and $10 shirt. Okay. Here, here go your check for $100. I'm, I'm putting it in the mail to you. I'm doing so good. See, a woman who done, you rid yourself of that mess. But you holding on to that clothes for that little bit of interaction. And now what y'all tell oh, well, that's wrong to get rid of a man. Coco, what if he go crazy? I, that ain't right to, to be done with somebody properly. Listen. If you don't claim your property, your property gone. You get X amount of days to claim the property. I don't care if it's at the police station. They're not finna hold your property for years and years and years. Your property finna be in an auction to, to raise money for their Christmas bonus. You know what I'm saying? And this the police. This the law. Anyway, your, your property finna be gone. You hear me? I left my iPad at the Atlanta airport. My wife called them, and right after I told them, they said they got my, my iPad. Call the next day. Oh, we can't find that. This place, these people work for the government, stealing iPads. So it's like, this man don't expect to have that. And he also don't expect you to sit around, hold his clothes, and wait on him. So listen, when you done with a man, you got to close the door. And here's the other part of this, which y'all have to realize what a lot of men doing. Understand this. In a relationship, there is no such thing as off and on. You either off or you on. If you off more than once, your relationship done. That's not a relationship no more. If you off more than one time in that season of the relationship, meaning y'all dating, y'all not married, and you off and on, off and on, that relationship is done. Finito. If y'all got to be off two times in a dating relationship like this right here, y'all done. Y'all done. Y'all can't come together and work through issues. Y'all done. Y'all too immature for each other. Y'all just not a mess. Y'all do not compliment one another. Y'all don't go together. So you wasted three years of your life. The only way to not have wasted those three years, you got to get the lesson from it. The, the lesson you need to take from this, don't ever give a man more than 12 months of your life. And that's a good man. That's an exceptional man. You give him 12 months of your life. By that 12 months, you make a decision to be done for good or diss your husband. Now, if he show you otherwise, between month 12 and 24, all right, you still leave. But around that 12-month mark, he need to be talking about marriage. He need to be talking about engagement, and he need to be bringing something to the table. This ain't nobody you finna have to take care of talking about marriage. Uh, a broke man always ready to get married in a lot of cases. But see, now this is the thing. Y'all dealing with men who broke and ain't even marrying y'all. Come on now. Come on now. 
Come on now. I I I, I make a little exception for y'all when y'all dealing with a man who got money and he running y'all through the ring. I I almost kind of understand because I bought could be bought. That's I, I really that was one of the icing on the cake when my wife told me she was going to school to be a doctor. I'm like, oh okay, I'm gonna be a stay at home dad. I bought could be bought. So I really don't be trying to judge women too much when you get bought. Now I be saying don't get bought, but hey, I kind of get it sometimes. But when y'all putting up with this from a broke man, a man that ain't got the finances to get in a car, do he got a car? He ain't got forty dollars. He ain't he ain't got sixty dollars to come meet you halfway. Halfway that means he driving three and a half hours. That's not even a whole tank of gas. This man ain't got no tank of gas. And then it's like he don't know when his off days is. That's a temper. That's a temp job. That's when you getting. That's when you hopping in the bike of the truck. You getting dropped off downtown and you hopping in the bike of the truck. And you just working day to day. I need to talk to my supervisor. See when I'm gonna be off. So you ain't got no off days and you broke. Now some ain't going. Now what you working under the table? Do you got a record? Do you got a record like the last brother had a record? You must got a record. Because, now see, think about this. This what y'all dealing with. Come on now, sister. Now see, what he don't care nothing about them clothes. Because you know what? If he got to go back and live with his mama, them clothes ain't worth nothing. Them clothes, that, that let me know them clothes ain't worth nothing. It, his, his, his left, come get all your clothes. You, them clothes ain't worth nothing. And the reason why they ain't worth nothing because probably another woman bought them the clothes. That's why they only mean nothing to them. If I leave some hard-earned clothes that I don't work hard for and pop, I'm coming to get them clothes. If another Sally Sue or Jane bought them clothes, can have them clothes. I'm going to call you at the most inconvenient time in the world. This is something if I'm a grown boy. I'm going to call you the most inconvenient time in the world. Uh, yeah. Oh, hey. Hey, how you doing? Everything going good? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I see you on Facebook. I see you doing good and everything. I ain't want to bother you or nothing like that. I just was calling you because, you know, I got a new job off and I just, they, they allow us to wear different stuff. And so I want to know if I could come get my clothes. Oh, oh, I can, oh, oh, you still got them? Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Oh, I, I ain't know if they'll be thrown away. Oh, you got to go? Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow my cousin's car and I'm going to uh, get some gas money from my mama. Then I'm, you still can meet me halfway. Well, actually, my cousin's car, his alternator been acting up. So you think you probably could come 75% of the way and I meet you 25? Yeah, I have to look back in my school book to see what 25% of the way is. But because, you know, I'm from the streets. But, yeah, I could meet you 25% of the way. That's all right with you? Oh, it is? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I, I know you got a boyfriend and all that. I ain't going to be trying to talk to you. Nothing like that. Even though I love you with all my heart and do anything for you and take a bullet for you, I, I totally I totally get it. And it's like, just I was just getting ready to propose to you right when I seen him on Facebook. And it just, even though it broke my heart and crushed everything in me because I had a ring and everything already purchased, but now I'm just having to pawn the ring and everything. But, yeah. But it's all right. So, yeah, 25%. Of, okay. All right. All right. Love you. I, I'm sorry. Sorry. I ain't mean to say I love you. I ain't. It just from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks is what the Bible says. Like, I've been reading two chapters a day and it's just like, it's like writing upon the tables of my heart. It's like anytime I talk on the phone, it's like I got scripture just coming out of me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Love you. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. See you soon. 25% of the way. That's how he'll do you. That's why he left him closed with you. That is why he left them clothes with you. He fin when you doing good, when you just yeah, look like you the heel, and that Facebook look heel, cause see a person can look at your Facebook or your Instagram and tell if you heel or broken. People can tell now. You think people can't tell? People can tell. Soon as you look heel, he giving you a call. You see what I'm telling? That's why he left them little raggedy clothes at that house. Me personally. Oh yeah, you got a deadline. Um, if I got to Google him and his mama, and go on the PeopleSearch.com and find their address, mama ain't had that many addresses. I'm shipping them clothes over there. 
You hear me? If I'm trying to be nice. If I'm all the way done and I know me a goon or two that's got me some protection, I'm going to drop them clothes off at the Goodwill because I'm protected by the blood of Jesus and by the bloods. By the real blood and the blood of Jesus, I'm protected by the real blood of Jesus and the blood, the gang. I'm protected. I'm drawing Goodwill. There you go. Go to Goodwill. Hey, my light about to give out on me, so y'all forgive me. This here light go out, but I got my backup light, so I ain't going to be as clear, but you still going to be able to see me. But I'm going to get ready to go. I'm going to come on here 15 minutes. So understand this right here. Here go the lesson from this. Don't ever give a man more than one year of your life. And one year, if he not in a position to be a husband and he not talking marriage and he not looking like he planning an engagement and you don't feel like this 100% your husband, move on with your life. The next lesson from this right here is there is no such thing as off and on. If y'all are dating and you got to be off two times on that second off, keep it off. Keep keep it off. Don't cut the power back on. The power staying off. Get to cut the, all the power supply. We done. We done. We, we got to go on about our life. We can't get this right. We adults. We still got to be off and on. Break up the makeup. No, I got to go. Got to go. I ain't got the time. I ain't got the time. The other thing what you have to realize is when a man going backwards, when y'all seven hours apart, he go be with another woman. He start talking to another woman before y'all broke up. All right, now he cheating. So listen, when a man go backwards, he cheating and he had to move with his mama. And he's struggling financially. Gotta go, gotta go. This ain't what the Lord called me to. This ain't what the Lord called me to. The Lord said he won't put more on me than I could bear. And this man getting real heavy with me having to carry him like this. This ain't the work of the Lord. This is not my calling. This is not my purpose. I got to go. You see what I'm saying? I got to go. It's, it's, it's a wrap. Finito. We all the way done. So get that lesson from that right there. And listen, the last lesson I pulled from this right here is a leopard don't change his spots now, but you also find that he talking to another woman, but messaging a female you know, a female, no, a female I know, to meet up with her, telling her he's single now and only conversing with a girl. But remind you, we stopped talking almost two months ago, but now he's dealing with somebody else. So again, he's looking for a sponsor. He is looking for a sponsor. Now, what I was about to say on this here, this here last lesson. Throwing him away. Financial problems. So he having financial problems. So he can't even take care of you. He can't even help you out. But he cheating on you. This right here. This is a hold me down. You'll hold me down. One thing you got to realize about this right here. This is a lesson. When you notice a man. Is dating around. Or he talking to other women. But he won't let you go. Oh, this is the lesson I was going to say. Give yourself closure. It came back to me. I lost it. See, I'm on, on top of the head with this. I read the emails live. I, so you see, as you hearing this, this is when I'm seeing this. I ain't got the time to read a whole email, all these whole emails, and do a video. That's double the work. So we working through this together. So I'm breaking this down together as you breaking it down. If I, if I knew how to edit, I'd put the, the email up on the screen where you could read it too. But listen to me. Give yourself closure. This to everybody out there who somebody you with, you dealing with, giving you mixed signals and they in and out your life and y'all on again, off again, break up the makeup. Give yourself closure. You give yourself closure. You close the door on the relationship. You mail their stuff back. You get rid of their stuff and you move on with their life. Don't wait on them to come pick their stuff up. Don't wait on them to give you closure. Don't wait on them to tell you you free to go. We done for good. Don't wait on them to tell you, I don't want you. Listen to what they actions are saying. Listen to what they not saying with their mouth, but what they actions saying loud and clear. And then give yourself closure and move on with your life. Finito, we done. Door is closed. The locks are changed. You can't reach me. Your number blocked. You don't know where I live at no more. If you come over here, I got a restraining order. Stick it on the door with your name on it. You mean so they come to your house, slide a restraining order. Just print one offline, restraining order, and put their name on it. So when they come, you just slide it right through the door. Just slide it right up under the door, restraining order. 
Got to go close. Closure. We done. You see what I mean? That's what you got to do. Hey, this is Tony Gaston. God bless you. Let me go and hit 20 minutes. All right. Hit 20 minutes. God bless you. We'll talk soon.